Hey everybody, you're watching Ready, Set, Drone, and today I have the Bugs 5W. This is a brushless quad with GPS and a pretty decent camera built in, so stay tuned and we'll check it out. All right, so the Bugs 5W arrived just recently. This will actually be my first flight with it, and I know there's a couple of things about this that are gonna be pretty cool. It does have some intelligent flight modes. It has a follow me mode and it does have a GPS built in. So that's something that makes a huge difference, especially if you're a beginner. It's got a 1080p camera with a micro SD slot so you can record locally. You can also record using the app. It uses the Bugs Go app, which is free uh, and works on iOS and Android. And I've used the Bugs Go app on a couple of different drones and it does just fine. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and uh, set it on the ground, take it off, and just try it out a little bit and see how it does. So one thing with bugs and drones that you need to keep in mind, you may experience a situation where you, oh, I have 18 satellites. Um, you may experience a situation where it won't fire up. That's because you have to calibrate the compass. And to calibrate the compass, you simply do, the lights will be blinking on the bottom. You simply uh, spin it horizontally first until the lights change from yellow to green. And then once you've done that, you spin it vertically until the lights change from blinking green to this green, uh, I guess yellow and red combination that it is right now. And they'll be solid. Once the lights are solid, then you've calibrated the compass and it's good to go. It's not a huge deal. It only takes a few seconds, a little bit of a pain, but it's gonna give you better GPS accuracy. So let's spin it up and take it for a flight. And you can uh, spin up the props by either bringing the sticks down and in or pushing the lock button. Oh. Yeah. Now this thing does not have an actual gimbal, but it does have, um, it does have little vibration dampeners underneath the camera. Um, and it says you can actually tilt the camera up and down using, uh, I'm not sure how to do that. I'm gonna have to look at the instructions on how to tilt the camera up and down. Making Vinny a little nervous. Now, I do have 18 satellites, and so I'm gonna try the return to home button, and I'm gonna let go of the stick and see if it comes back and lands where it took off from or close to it. It hadn't gone very far, but this is probably a safe test. So this, again, I'm not touching the stick at all. I'm just letting it return to home on its own. And it should start to come down. Maybe it's just come down really slow. There it goes. Oh, it's coming down pretty fast. Get out of the way. I'd say that's within two feet of where it took off from. Pretty good. We can try this with a landing pad and actually really test it, but uh, that was a nice little test of the return to home feature. Okay, so there is a switch here that on the lower left that has an A and a B, and A is gonna be what they call gesture mode, but um, it's usually called attitude mode or meaning that there's no, um, when, when it's, switched over to A, it's not using any satellites or GPS. B is satellite hold. I did not actually have it in satellite hold just a moment ago. I do now. This is also your headless mode over here on the right. Um, you can switch between headless and regular. I'm gonna leave it in regular with GPS and zip it around in the field a little bit. Let me just let go of the stick. And you can see the GPS uh, locks it in place pretty well when you let go of the stick.
According to the instruction manual, the Bugs 5W is supposed to have a flight time of somewhere between 16 and 18 minutes of continuous flight. To test that, uh, I've recharged the battery back up to 100%, which by the way is a 7.4 volt, uh, 1800 milliamp hour battery. Um, so, decent amount of capacity, and this is not a super heavy drone. Uh, so I'm going to put it up there in hover and just hold it in place and time it and see how long it will go until it gives a low battery warning and tries to land itself. So let's check it out. Okay, so I got 16 minutes and 32 seconds before I had to land it. Uh, one interesting point about it that I noticed is I was trying to hover right back behind me here near the house at about five, six feet in the air, and it was drifting all over the place. And I thought maybe it was getting uh, interference from its satellite connection because it was somewhat under the house. You know, part of the sky was blocked by the house. So I took it out into the yard a little bit, took it up to about 10 feet where it's pretty clear, and it did just fine. It locked right in place with the satellite. So if you are trying to fly it uh, with a roof nearby or something, a big structure near you, be aware that that might block some of the satellites and, and cause, the, um, cause the GPS to not hold it as well as it could in open sky. Did great in the open sky. And like I said, 16 minutes and 32 seconds was the uh, flight time that I got on a fully charged battery. So a couple things uh, to keep in mind, there is a wheel here on the remote that tilts the camera down and up. And you can see it's pretty slow, but it's tilting down right now. Uh, now it's facing the ground and now it's tilting up. And that's pretty nice. Um, they do say in the instructions to be sure the camera is tilted up when you land, because I imagine if it's tilted down, you might damage the lens. So again, it's this little wheel. It gives you the ability to adjust the tilt, which is pretty cool for a little drone like this. And then number two, I don't think there's multiple flight rates in this thing. I think it's a just one default flight rate, which is very zippy. So I don't know that you would need anything faster than that, especially if you're trying to film with it. Uh, and then number three, I just wanted to show you these little dampeners here that are on this camera. They're little rubber balls that kind of just keep the thing, um, uh, hopefully keep vibration from getting too bad. So I'm going to take it off, fly it around one more time, and this time I'm going to actually try the circle mode and maybe the follow me mode and see if it'll do those two. So let's take it off and see. So I'll roll some video on it. Go ahead and uh, spin up the props. Fly it over there a little bit. Now it is in GPS mode, so it should hold in place if I let go of the stick, which I believe it is. All right, so I'm going to actually back it up uh, to my left, and he's right here. Take it up over the goalpost to be safe, and try out this circle thing here. So I'm going to tilt the camera down so it can see me. All right, now let's try this circle thing and see if it will do it. With point of interest, aircraft will continuously circle clockwise around the preset point. The point of interest is at 10 meters forward of the aircraft by default to change this, say, flight radius. Okay, so I'm going to start the orbit. And so its point of interest is actually over there. <laughs> but it is going in a nice little circle, which is cool. Uh, there isn't a lot of wind today, so it's just uh, kind of cruising in a circle. So let me see if I can stop that. Okay, I just stopped it. Now I'm going to try the uh, follow me. So let me bring it down a little bit. and a little closer to me. And get the camera lined up as best I can. Okay, and I'm gonna hit okay. And see if it will follow me. It just tried to adjust. All right, I'm gonna go this way. Okay, so now I'm not, I'm not making any adjustments to the remote. I'm just walking. And all right, it 
isn't moving now. Oh, now it is. Does it look like it's moving? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, okay. So it is actually uh, following very crudely, um, meaning that it's not precise. It seems to like sit there and wait till I move quite a bit and then it jumps quite a bit, but it does follow without any input. I'm walking towards it and now it's backing up away from me. So that's kind of cool. All right, let's see what else we've got. Um, this is the tap to fly. So this makes me a little nervous, but I'm gonna try it. I'm just gonna go, uh, gonna tap here. And all right, I'm gonna tap, draw a line. I'm gonna draw it out and around. And I'll hit go. All right, and it's supposedly following this path. Okay, it's making the turns. I'm glad I tapped in the right spots. All right, now I'm gonna stop this because it's going really far away. Actually, you know what, I'm gonna hit return to home. See if it will return to home now. Yeah, so the tap to the the follow distance works seems to work okay. And now here it comes returning to home. And theoretically it should land right about here. So after one battery of flight, I'm pretty impressed with the Bugs 5W. Uh, the GPS is rock solid. Uh, it's quick to calibrate the compass. The little tilt on the camera is a nice touch. I haven't seen the footage yet, but I'm guessing it's gonna be pretty good at 1080p with all the in image uh, dampening that happens with this uh, little, these little balls. Uh, again, it's not, a, it's not a gimbal, so it's not gonna give you that ultra smooth gimbal footage, but it is a big step up from just having a firm attachment that doesn't have any give. Uh, and again, I like the tilt on it. The uh, form factor is really nice too. It's not as big as the Bugs 3, and it certainly uh, is pretty powerful um, without too many bells and whistles. I did try the return to home, it worked great. I did try the uh, programming a path flight for it, and it followed it pretty well. Overall, first impression of this thing is I'm pretty impressed, I like it. Uh, I'm gonna put a link in the description if you wanna check it out, check out the pricing and the full specifications. Uh, if you like this video, I hope you'll give it a big thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos about drones, especially Bugs drones, which I really like, please subscribe to Ready, Set, Drone and hit that notification bell. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching.